एशियन फ्लू हांगकांग फ्लू शार्ट्स आउटब्रेक स्वाइन फ्लू कोरोना वायरस आउटब्रेक अफ्रीका इबोला वायरस एंड द करंटली द शार्ट्स को टू सो हियर ही बी कंसीडर्ड द डेट एंड द डिजीज different multiple color so check that the red color that is the small pox so it was two times in the world then check the plague bubonic plague that is that three times now check the influenza one of the most uh, uh, dangerous uh, infectious disease in the world still and there is no vaccine yet so influenza you know there are several categories so influenza is h1n1 h1n2 there are several categories of uh, influenza now we have sars mars cov1 and covid 19 all of these are basically from the same viruses corona viruses so let us continue and now we are going to just consider some of the pioneers who designed the mathematical model and there is a evolutionary invention and uh, in the area of mathematical modeling and control of the infectious diseases the first the scientist john brown in the 17th century and his book natural and political observations made upon the beats of mortality the first study of infectious disease and public health in 18th century daniel bernoulli basically at a time is scientist at a time a mathematician at a time uh, he has many contribution in public health So he used the first epidemiological model and applied to reduce the death of a small pox. Uh, dear scholars, so I would like to just go back. Say that this is the Daniel Bernoulli uh, reduced the death of a small pox. So go back here. Where is this small pox? It was the just in the initial first big pandemics in the history. I can you imagine how long ago it was and when? This is small pox. So it was the 18th century. So after uh, uh, 20, uh, 16th century later, Daniel Bernoulli just reduced the death of small pox. And next, in the early 20th, 20th century, modeling of infectious diseases made significant strides with the work of William Hammer, who is the mass of action law in modeling. That is connected with the uh, mathematical modeling and physical science. and then the sir ronald ross sir ronald ross and the father of modern modern mathematical epidemiology he did pioneer work on malaria we know uh, when uh, there is a lot of death according to uh, due to the disease of malaria and first time the people was more quite happy what is the main reason so sir ronald ross invented that is transmitted between humans and mosquitoes Uh, mosquitoes in his book the prevention of malaria he derived the threshold quantity and today's very mass well known uh, threshold that is known as the basic reproduction number are not and that is a very key point in any epidemiological epidemiological model study and next epidemiology models has reached to a new level by the sir model published by Carmack and McEndrick in 1927 and so if we compare uh, in 1927 and this now to the 2020 so around 100 years basically uh, uh, all the modeling area of uh, mathematical biology and finally in 1980 there is the another invention that was the HIV epidemic so when we consider a good mathematical model that is the most important model uh, important question here when you want to study when you want to analyze a mathematical model first you have to ensure your model is dimensionally correct your model is perfect your model is model translate from the real scenario in our everyday life different types of disease and this mathematical equations matching with each other then what should we do actually then what this uh, the main features of modeling in epidemic yeah
equilibrium points to know the bifurcation analysis, to analyze sensitivity of parameters, that means switch parameters are dominating the results, to validate the results numerically, then introduce the optimal control theory, and I believe after uh, today, the next Hello. lecture um, uh, will be about the optimal control theory, CTMC model, and also known as the Markov chain and probability of disease outbreak, and finally, you can choose space statistic model. So, uh, dear audience, in the following session, we'll discuss some epidemic models and their dynamics. So, this is the most of them are the compartmental model and very much well-known model to all of us. That is the initial model of the SI model, then SIS, then SIR, and SEIR. Basically, this is not all. There are a lot of modified model. S, I, R, S, and I will show later. So here, just see the notation. S is the suspected populations. I is the infectious population. R is the recovered. And E is the exposed populations. So we should know about the auxiliary point for all this type of population. So the exposed individuals, when a healthy individual who is Vulnerable to contract, uh, contracting a disease makes a potentially disease transmitting contact that individual become exposed. Infected and infectious diseases, if the pathogen establishes itself in an exposed individual, then the individual becomes infected Infected individuals who can trans transmit the disease are called infectious. So basically, we define the I is infectious. Latent in, uh, individuals, okay, we define latent individuals. These are individuals that are infected but not yet infectious. The latent period is defined as the time from infection to when the host is able to transmit the infectious as into another individuals. That means, so actually it will consider according to the incubation period. So incubation period depends uh, and varies from disease to disease. And finally the incidence, it is defined as the number of individuals who become ill during the specified interval of time. So now this is the most basic model, SI model. And here this is the diagram of SI model, that is the suspectful population and then the infected population. Here, what is the scenario of susceptible SI model? In this model, it shows basically the behavior of SI model. If some population is infected, there is no option of recovery. So is there really any disease? And this is the mathematical expression of this model. And the total population definitely N should be the sum of suspected and uh, infected population, and that is uh, incident, that incident of total population is also zero. Definitely, if we say, especially the doctors and public health experts know better than mathematicians, in SI models, people never leave the infection state, have lifelong infections. So, what type of disease we have? So, if we take, for example, RPD. RPD is a disease with lifelong, uh, lifelong infections. If you have more interest about this disease, you can check the literature or you can do the Google, you will get a lot of information about this disease. Because today, when you consider most of the models are a little bit advanced models. So, at that point, it's, you, can, you can see is that the okay, SI model is meaningless model, so definitely not. Okay, so let us continue for the next model, SIS model, a little bit advanced model of SI model. This is a modification on SI model for those infectious disease from which permanent recovery is not possible, but the infected one jumps into susceptible compartment again. So this is the real scenario of this diagram. So this is the path is susceptible to infected and again infected to suspected. And this is the mathematical model. And this is the mathematical model, so ordinary differential equation. And this model is appropriate for diseases that commonly have a repeat infections. For example, the common cold, basically many seasonal flu, and the sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea and uh, chlamydia. Okay, 
We can continue for the next one. It's very well known. He invented in 1927, Carman and Magendic, and today is very famous and uh, very used, one of the used mathematical model, that is SIR model. And in this model at a time, we have suspected population infected and additional time is the recovered population. In many diseases, population can completely recover. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. Maybe some uh, due to some technical problem, our speaker has been disconnected. I hope he will join soon. Please wait. जी सर हाँ हाँ फंदी ची फंदी ची Please carry on, Dr. Kamru Chaman. Please unmute, we cannot hear you. Please unmute, Dr. Kamru Chaman, please unmute your audio. model here this we have uh, just the recruitment rate that is the basically the daily birth of population in a habitat and the additional term the uh, natural day every day in each society and according to this point the, the incidence rate that is not basically it is uh, uh, zero so the total population is again is bounded so, and this is the structure and this is the mathematical model of the demographic SIR model. And next, the next uh, advanced model is SEIR. So, in this model, we consider another population that is the exposed population. Also, sometimes we say the latent populations 
And in this Latin population, this is one of the uh, perfect mathematical model which studied the uh, disease like COVID-19. Because in COVID-19, there is an incubation period and that is like average was 5.1 and recent who just announced this year, average period is around 7 days. Around 7 days. So, so many people passing the Latin period, that is the exposed population and that is the additional term in the exposed population and this is the complete equation of SEIR model. And now we have a quarantine model. Uh, this is basically not a new model, but this quarantine model especially focus uh, in 25th century. But if you follow many uh, good literature and many books, this quarantine model is one of the old models. So when we consider there are some uh, pandemic, then automatically some population in the society are in automatically isolated due to their own interest or sometimes in the hospital or sometimes in other location, so that is the idea of quarantine. So that basically it will show the another mathematical uh, term expression, and then this is the here we design basically extension of SIR model. But quarantine model can be five compartment, six compartment, even eight compartment model. So this one is the very basic quarantine model. Okay. Now we are interested to show the applications of our previously discussed mathematical model. So here, this scenario, this scenario is the COVID-19, the main uh, scenario, the main infectious disease of 21st century. And we know the, what is the main reason of death uh, when some uh, individuals are infected by COVID-19. So, we consider initially here the uh, our last model, the SEIR model. The mathematical model is presented as follows. And in this mathematical model, first we want to in this follow this table. Here sigma is the transit rate from the exposed population to the infected class, and beta one is the transmission rate from contact with E and beta 2 transmission rate from contact with the infected class due to disease induced death rate. Lambda is the recruitment rate in S class. Gamma 1 is the recovery rate of E class. Gamma 2 the recovery rate of infected class and mu 1 is the natural death rate. So one of the big challenges for this type of study, since there are a lot of available data, we have to properly estimate the parameter. That's one of the most important points for this type of model. Because anyone can solve this differential equation, and especially for the recitation mathematician, it's not a challenging task. So for this model, we are just going to consider one of the one of the state of USA. This study, this projection uh, shows one of the state of USA and in this figure 3 there are left and right diagrams. Left, left diagram shows the daily cases, daily cases and right hand cases that the total cases or you can say also the cumulative cases. So there is a lot of fluctuation, take that lot of fluctuation in the left hand diagram but he still the model prediction. This area is the model prediction. So model prediction is pretty good and it has uh, the purpose thing is said that uh, at the end of this year or early of January, the disease will be in control, under control uh, on that. And during the control, there is a lot of populations will be infected. And now we have a forecasting one because uh, two, especially two parameters, beta 1 and beta 2, that is connected between S class and E class and beta 2 is the S class and I class. So at that point, uh, it's very interesting and it's really not the uh, easy to um, estimate the parameters. So, and, and every day we know, every day the scenario is changing. So if 2% changing of beta 1, I mean 2% plus minus, if 2% that increasing, then the per day is around 14,000 the infection rate. And if 2% decreasing, then it will be around 3,000. 3, and the similar scenario here, this is the baseline in the middle, uh, middle area, middle curve. And the lower curve is the uh, minus 
two percent of beta one. That is the, the base level, and the right. upper curve is the plus two percent. And this is the forecasting tool by considering beta two, and take the the same scenario here again. Is, that uh, part infection rate is fourteen thousand, but that's the sales ten percent increasing and ten percent decreasing. That means there is a uh, very significant biological meaning of beta one and beta two. Now, uh, this model is a five compartment model and uh, comparatively a little bit uh, advanced model. Yeah, but uh, when we start, when the model is more complex, actually start is more complex. The reason is uh, when you consider the multiple compartment models, number of parameter automatically will be increasing. And if the your number of parameters is increasing okay, and the parameter estimation is not in proper way, then your result is not perfect. Okay. And uh, the forecasting might be wrong. So this is a hard model. One will be probably that we basically defined as the asymptotic class and that is also perfect for the um, COVID-19. Because we know in the whole world, uh, many mm -hmm. populations has mm -hmm. no symptoms, but still they are carrying uh, the coronavirus disease. Yeah. And there are uh, many people are infected by the asymptotic class uh, yeah. Yeah. populations. So, that's the reason we introduced this new model and yeah. it shows yeah. some results for this model as well. Actually, there is no theoretical study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Short yeah. time presentation, yeah. uh, that's yeah. only the uh, graphical outcome here. Yeah. And here, okay. this okay. upper two curves, this is specifically for the result of France. In France, check that if there is a lot of fluctuation in some days, but the results are pretty good. And even using this five compartment model in the lower diagram, that shows the Italy. Italy, and here, the Italy is almost the disease under control, but whenever we check that, uh, at the end of July in Spain, uh, the disease was under control, but again the second wave is running. If you object or if you, if you know, you will follow that. The second wave is not like that, but again the second wave is a little bit bigger, smaller than the previous wave. And now we are going to the last uh, phase, last uh, phase that is the vaccination model. So since the whole world, we are eagerly waiting for the vaccine, not we, all the countries, uh, all the populations are waiting for a proper vaccine, no side effects that will work properly. So, first we have to start the DNA and RNA viruses. Check that here, the adenovirus, hepatitis B, and Ebola virus, bacteriophage, influenza, HIV, rotavirus. Here, uh, spoilers, we know, uh, hopefully only this is the hepatitis B, we have the only the vaccine for hepatitis B, that was the DNA viruses. And not uh, all others, this was rotavirus, HIV, Ebola virus, and uh, bacteriophage or influenza, all are RNA virus. And influenza was in the second, uh, right, on the second century, still there is no vaccine in the world. So now we are going to consider so it's a challenging task. Actually, this figure shows it's a very challenging task to get a, a perfect vaccine uh, to protect the COVID-19. Okay, so this is the model. Before the model, we have considered a, a special diagram. And here we consider only three compartment model, S, B, and I. So this is the S, I, S model that additionally we have introduced the vaccinated populations here. And also, we have considered the holding type growth function here. And so, the most dominating aim is the national death rate. L is the vaccination coverage of S class. And B is the average number of contact partners. This is the nonlinear incidence. And Q1 and Q2 are two probabilities according to S class and B classes. And we will just now just translate this diagram to a mathematical equation and this is one of the mathematical equation and from my point of view definitely this model is uh, one of the most challenging mathematical model this is the partial differential equation 
At the time, there is non-linear incident, so definitely there are a lot of bifurcation, and there is a many cases the diffusion speed delta one, delta two, and delta three can be either equal or not equal, and multiple other criteria that C, that is the therapeutic impact. So at the time, two new idea here that is the vaccination and the therapeutic impact, and here the initial conditions of the uh, classes and the zero Neumann boundary condition, that means you know flux boundary condition and we know the proper meaning of no flux boundary condition for a bounded habitat. And this is the glossary of notation, so I am not going to explain in details. So here some of the uh, analytic results here, we assume that all the diffusion speed are same then the first theory, the conclusion of first theory shows that there is a global compact absorption. That means all the solution for any initial failure solution will converge to the global attractor X plus. That is basically the domain. And in equivalent to in the second theorem, when the basic reproduction number is less than one, then the disease free equilibrium E naught is locally asymptotically stable. And the opposite scenario is uh, disease equilibrium is stable when R not greater than 1. And in the third, third theorem, that is the global analysis, and the DFE is stable when R not less than or equal to 1. Actually, there is no proof, all the proofs are very too large. So that I omitted all the proof. In the next theorem 4 and theorem 5, theorem 5 shows that uh, when R not greater than 1, that disease equilibrium. Here is that is asymptotically stable, and here it considers a threshold, and this threshold is connected with the Lyapunov function. And the last theorem mentioned the persistence of solution. I mean, S, V, and I that should be non-zero. Now, the numerical calibration and the first uh, three diagrams in the figure A that is the disease free equilibrium of the model two with time and a special domain and here this is the s class population this is the vaccinated population and this is the infected population so take that in pd figures with respect to time at a certain time i tends to zero that means there is not a single i class population so what is the calculation in the limit the formula for basic reproduction number for this study shows that R0 is 0.4495 less than 1. So definitely according to our second theory, it ensures that the DFP should be st stable. And uh, from and here, this is the E0, this is 666, 7, uh, population and I0 population. And if we follow this uh, number, with mathematical calculations and this uh, graphical number, they are almost coincides basically. And next, for the disease scenario, the disease scenario on A, S, B, and I, basically all three are coexisting, but still there is the infected class populations are available, and the reason is here uh, for these cases R naught is too large and greater than one, so definitely uh, I is still available infected population is available. And now we have the uh, large solution due, uh, due to the effect of the therapeutic impact C, and this is the bifurcation scenario, and here uh, C is 0 0.25, C is 12, and C is 24. So when C is comparatively very small, then there is a good effect, and the, all three figures for the infected class. The infected class is going to tend to 0, and after certain stress level, actually there is no effect of uh, uh, therapeutic impact. So sometimes also therapeutic impact can be negative. Uh, so okay, we can just explain it later if necessary. Okay. So significance of this model, especially the last model, medical researchers say since vaccine works with the immune system, and evidently as the disease cannot provide immunity. So not the vaccination. That means when some population is already infected, so in, in that at that point most of the vaccine properly does not work. At the second point, as a result, most of the diseases have a recovered immune state for which vaccination is successful. 
some other bacteria can remain in the host without causing any disease known as carry carrier stains in a consequence that model was the adver extended of sis model is considerable in this action of vaccination many infectious diseases show periodic fluctuation in abundance such periodicity may be driven by intrinsic factors such as non linearity of incidence rates that can be polling type 1 polling type 2 polling type 3 and so on and now it's time to acknowledge all of my research collaborator actually some of them uh, in epidemiology and in ecology so they are definitely they have many contribution for this study and especially for the last vaccination model and also the pbs ordinary differential equation i mean the fourth compartment and fifth compartment model so i acknowledge all of them and for their contribution for this research and there are some uh, uh, corresponding references and initial uh, the researchers who are going to planning to study in epidemiology they can follow the first book very nice introductory books in mathematical epidemiology and finally what is the concluding remarks actually i want to do the concluding remarks in two sentences so dear scholars the first sentence in red mark destroying nature unleashes infectious diseases and undoubtedly this statement is true and today we are facing this problem because and only human and mankind are responsible for this because we are destroying the nature we are uh, destroying our environment and last the second sentence protect the environment prevent pandemics and then this is the nasa is sending us a clear message and this is the clear message of nasa so forget about yourself think about the, our next generation uh, to create a good world then we need to support our environment save our wild animals everything and that's all and thank you so much for your time Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammad Kamru Jaman, for your nice presentation. Now we have question answer session. We have received a couple of questions from the participants. So the first question is: Is there any role of modeling in module theory? Uh, is there any role of, of modeling, modeling in module theory? I think there. I think there must be a role, but we are not discussing about module right. theory. Uh, yeah. So in module theory, actually. There is the idea. Definitely, each section actually there is some idea of uh, modeling, but uh, completely in each platform the modeling behavior, modeling the idea is also different as well. That's true. Okay, so next question uh, from Tasnuba Islam: What does a vector host model look like? Okay, in vector host model looks like also this model actually that we consider here. Mm, uh, this model can be a vector host model. This model can be a vector host model. In vector host model, that we actually consider the vector bond disease basically. We consider the vector bond disease, and there is a good significance in vector host modeling or vector bond disease modeling. At that point, here all this study in this presentation, they show the average reproduction number R R naught. But in vector host modeling or vector uh, uh, bond disease studies, then we can find basically. And the if I can just write here, that is like that type of scenery. I mean the actual basic reproduction number. We can find the actual basic reproduction number with respect to time, even with respect to um, uh, heterogeneity. I mean the domain instead of just the constant or average reproduction number. That is the major significance. And uh, definitely, a uh, good point uh, for vector board disease or vector host modeling. Okay, so <clears throat> Nurul Anwar, uh, he is from uh, Australia. So he has asked uh, three questions. So, uh, can you give an intuition of the meaning of infection time? Uh, infection time. Okay. Mean, sorry, mean infection time. For oh, mean infection time. Okay, so if we consider the mean infection time, then 
basically okay. simply i can just explain about the mean friction time uh, so that is it depends on basically uh, the human host uh, your immune system according to your immune system sorry so um, the infection time some population for example if, uh, since uh, the application was all covid 19 some populations are infected within uh, uh, two days right and some populations are 14 even 27 days so the mean infection time that should be the average that should be the we have to uh, consider the um, deviations of the statistical formula to get the mean infection time and uh, that actually here you consider uh, 5.1 days for covid 19 that is the mean infection time and that is from 2 days to 27 days the average of all uh, all these results and that was the basically the experimental ideas to find this 5.1 days and recently 5.1 days tends to around 7 days okay the next question is which method were used to fit the model to the data of france and italy which model okay. you have used okay uh, france and italy actually i uh, consider the uh, this this is the model actually france and italy i consider basically six compartment Compart model and five compartment model here actually here i consider this model exactly this is visible oh, i think s e i a r model that is s class exposed population infected population and that also the asymptotic population and also we found that is a lot of uh, infection uh, populations are infected by the asymptotic classes that was studied for france and italy okay the next question is what would be the domain for x in the siv model okay so siv is a domain okay in general you when you want to implement the mathematical model basically uh, most of the functions are basically depends on both the space or time or at least depends on space so at that point for numerical uh, solutions we consider Uh, for example if we consider the sine function or cosine function then it should be either 0 to 1 or 0 to 5 that uh, that implies i mean but for one dimensional cases but uh, this is not mandatory someone can study for four dimension i mean including time you can study four dimensional cases so uh, for numerical solution either uh, my uh, suggestion is either 0 to 1 then it should be the sine phi x if you consider 0 to 5 then it should be only sine but that definitely positive Okay, so the next question from Devasmita Mukherjee: Why there is no removed or recovered compartment in the vaccination model? Okay, so in the vaccination model, uh, so this is comparatively very challenging model. Uh, we can, um, uh, according to this question, we can definitely add the um, uh, since I consider I extended the SIS model uh, for this vaccination model. such a reason i don't consider the recovered uh, uh, removal or rec uh, recovered compartment but if we consider the recovered compartment definitely it's possible to study that the dynamics will be different and you can do that anyone can do that then the we have here the solution the ness and everything will be a little bit sets okay the next question is from ariful islam why do you do you consider the domain from minus 10 to 10 Uh, okay, minus ten to ten. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe for special domain. Right. I see. Okay. So in general, okay. so that's a good question actually it's also a good question for me actually in general it should not i need not to necessarily the negative domain as well right in general it's enough to consider only the positive domain yes but it, since uh, you have a uh, zero flux condition i think there would be no problem from mathematical view point i uh, think no right mathematical point of view it's not a problem yes. but when you consider the population dynamic yes, yes, actually right. uh, so from my law uh, few years experience actually last 10 years experience in generally always i consider and that should be more significant the only the domain is positive right right but, from, uh, for according to the numerical solution according to the model and boundary condition that you uh, mentioned there is no problem no problem but right that's a good question for me as well and uh, he has uh, he has one more question why the solution 
quickly converts to the stable state? Uh, so solution, okay, uh, it also depends on, uh, you know, this vaccination model uh, is, uh, there is no specific disease here. We don't consider any particular disease yet. This is the general study. So we can consider for this model multiple diseases. If we have ANA, for example, uh, if after two or three months later, if you have enough data for vaccinated population, then you can apply this model for that type of population. So depending on the disease, so this uh, sometimes, uh, from my experience, within time is T to 15, what does it mean? T to 15 means 15 seconds, 15 minutes, or 15 hours, or 15 years, right? So uh, this also depends on, depends on the human body or different types of species. So sometimes T can be 2,000, sometimes T can be only 20, so this convergence, uh, it's not mandatory. For this solution, okay, uh, depending on my choice of functions, it converges within t equal to 50. Sometimes we need many to consider t equal to 100. And uh, for this type of uh, model, uh, basically, uh, converges, since there is no singularity, especially that we consider in OD and PD model, there is no point of singularity. Uh, so, such a reason, this type of model, one point is a very significant point. Most of the cases, this type of, uh, type of model solution will converge a, a little bit fast. But not to show the real behavior of the model. Convergence fast, but not to show the real behavior of the model. I mean, real behavior of the model means when you consider t equal to 50, okay, since it's converging uh, very fast, so that consider t equal to 50. When it says t equal to 15 to t equal to 100, then the genome is com can be sensed compared to, uh, completely. Okay, the next question is from Asanullah. How tumor actually grows? It's a different kind of question. How tumor actually grows? If it grows logistically, then what is the process? Okay, so actually tumor growth can be, uh, I have other study actually in tumor growth, tumor modeling, so that is not part of this presentation, but I, so I can share some idea uh, uh, for this question, according to this question. For tumor growth, okay, you can consider not only logistic actually, you can consider the logistic, even you can consider the Malthusian, but I think the most perfect growth function is the Gomper growth function. Right. Tumor exactly. growth function, I believe you will agree that yes. the most perfect growth function is the Gompers growth Gompers. function because tumor behavior, tumor turns to cancer, right? Yes. So, tumor's initial initial growth is very slow, but at a certain, after a certain stage, the growth is very high, very, very high. So, if you set the real behavior, and if I that type here, uh, lawn, over. Can you see my monitor? Yes, yes. Yes, we yeah, can see. So this is the basically the Gompers model. So this is the Gompers growth model. I mean, if this is the Gompers growth model. So for the U is the tumor volume, right? U is the tumor volume. So U is very, at certain is very small. It will, uh, a lawn function is fluctuate very high. So this is the more uh, appropriate function to consider tumor or cancer modeling study. Okay, so we have so many questions. Uh, uh, so, Dr. Tambu Jawan, may I add some idea? Yes, yeah, please. please. Uh, about that question, uh, you can you can definitely uh, that one is is more than more than okay if you use compass model or if your data set uh, actually matches or you can fit your data with that with it. If you fit your data with the compass model, that is that perfect one. But if you are, um, it doesn't mean all all your models will be perfect for that. For example, if sometimes the cancer growth can depends on surface area, sometimes cancer depends that growth per, that depends on volume, that depends on the power law. So you have to make sure that which one is actually appropriate to model your uh, cancer growth. So if yeah, Dr. Prabhu Charamia, I am 100% agree with you. Uh, actually, if there is time, I can just instant show one another slide. I agree with your power law, logistic growth. Initial actually I mentioned, we can consider even Malthusian growth for tumor, uh, tumor modeling, right? 
So I am completely agree your point. All models, all growth function are not perfect for all types of tumor. Tumor is not a single class of tumor. There are multiple types of tumor, right? So definitely, I am agree with your with your suggestion and with your explanation. Okay, so next question is from Devasmita Mukherjee. Uh, she found that the average basic reproductive ratio for COVID is uh, from three to six. Three but to six. Three to six. Right. But, but here R zero is found approximately twenty two. Okay. So, so please explain this, this point. Okay. So uh, so actually I want to share with you this model. This model is not for actually for not for not designed for COVID-19, mm -hmm. right? Okay. okay. This this is the general study for vaccination model. Mm -hmm. So when you want to consider the specific previous all model was for previous all application was uh, all OD model was for COVID-19, right? But this model is not for COVID-19. This is for any type of vaccinated uh, disease, vaccinated, uh, right? So then we have to change the parameters for if we apply for COVID-19, then we need data, then definitely the parameter estimation, including data I to A, B, A, Q, I, B, all the parameters will be same. So yeah, that's the idea actually. Okay. The next question is from Anarul Islam. Disease-free equilibrium is asymptotically stable for uh, basic reproduction number when less than one and endemic one is stable when it is larger than one. What is its physical meaning or physical significance? Okay, so basically when uh, it means, okay, physical meaning, first we have to consider R not equal to one means the average every day one population will infect one population. So if the if per day the number of infection cases is less than one, definitely it means does not means basically the, in the real scenario it does not means the disease is fully under control. We just uh, mathematical assumption the disease is going to under control. Uh, but and for the when you consider R not greater than one, that means for example one infected uh, individual has infected more than one population. So what is the real scenario in biology or in a real case? That means every day the number of infected cases is increasing. That is the real, uh, that is the behavior. That is the explanation either biologically or uh, your everyday life. Okay. So and this is the threshold. And this threshold actually not only for, uh, not always mandatory from my point of view, uh, if you consider this R not sometimes, not basically one, uh, it can be R star, and R star can be greater than one sometimes. It's also true. Many studies found that not exactly one. This R star can be greater than one. But this is under, still under control. Okay, the next question is in spatial model, can we use next generation matrix method for finding basic reproduction number? So yeah, I use the basic next generation matrix to find the basic reproduction number for this study. but. Uh, you know, only for this uh, uh, model, I need one presentation actually. Yeah, but uh, that's uh, that I did, that we did actually in this study. Next generation matrix. Okay. So next question is, how can we compare the real data with basic model to understand the analysis of disease model? Yeah. Uh, so real data. Yes. So uh, then. Uh, I have several ideas actually. First, you have to show your expertise in data analysis, but forget about mathematical model. So your expertise in data, uh, data analysis, either R, Stata, SPSS, Python, MathLab, whatever you like, any one of the platform. First, it is necessary for your skillness, developing skillness in data analysis. Then, at a time, for example, this is one of the model. And this model, better I can just go for the previous model that is the data is available, right? Yes, I think we will. So this is the one of the models. So here, this line, this curve is basically the continuous curve, the solution of OD. And this line, this is the data basically. So what we have, what we did basically here, we solved this OD system using MATLAB. And at a time, but we basically used the MATLAB, MATLAB, and sometimes R to use this data analysis, and finally marks these two solutions in a single diagram. 
and compare your solution. Now, whether your parameter estimation is uh, good enough or what you need to sell, whatever, uh, and you'll get the final results, the final conclusion. Okay. Next question is from Khandukar Najmun Novi. When will you consider stochastic infectious modeling paradigm over deterministic approaches? Okay, in, I have not enough idea about the stochastic model, but one thing, uh, one idea that I was, if we consider the one of the model up a certain space, the disease probability of disease outbreak that I consider here, um, right, this is the CTMC model. That is one of the idea of the stochastic model, basically. CTMC model, uh, but for the long time, short time data, I mean the small data, it's really not very fruitful result for the stochastic model. Although we have seen, and the um, will ask this question, many publications of stochastic model in COVID-19 is available in the literature. But um, I asked one of the professors in USA, most, probably, most of you know, Linda Allen, uh, about yes. this stochastic model. Uh, that, uh, she comments about this short time data is not perfect for stochastic model. I mean the probability of disease outbreak. You need a long time data. I mean around two years data like that. So it's not, not my conclusion. It's the conclusion is one of the other professors as well. Okay. Next question is, uh, sometimes the compartments are more than seven or eight. Is there any easiest way to find the endemic equilibrium? for su such a large compartmental model. Okay, uh, I can share my experience. Yes, there are easiest way, but initially you have to spend a lot of time. You have to develop the any uh, language, I mean map all, math lab, thought and whatever you know. You have to develop the mathematical code. Then you can extend your uh, compartment from three to eight or 10 compartments, no matter then you have to design different types of coding, one for to find the R0, one to find the uh, value of coefficient for endemic equilibrium, like that. Otherwise, as far as I know, there is no easiest story actually. Okay, so we have uh, some more questions. So in figure eight, uh, how did you assume the initial conditions? In and which, eight, which numerical method you have used? Model, I yes, yes, I think so. Right. So, which okay. numerical method you have used here and okay. which software um, you have used to uh, represent okay. the diagrams? This problem solved using the final difference method. Uh, this solution found using the final difference method, very well known and renowned method. And <clears throat> the initial uh, initial population, uh, what do you think? Uh, initially, the suspected population is too large and at the time, uh, the vaccinated population is not also very small. That number is also comparatively not one to. It should be also 200, 400, or like 500. And then the infected population will be very small. But all are non-zero. S class, for example, I consider, for example, AS is 500. Then vaccinated is around 200 or 100. Then I is around 5 or 10, like that. So that was the initial, I mean, U0, V0, and, sorry, S0, V0, and I0. Okay, so the last question. So did you estimate R0 using real data for SIV model? Mm, so no, uh, not yet. No, honestly, I have no available data, but I am waiting for that, for COVID-19, for vaccination of COVID-19. Okay, so that's all about Again, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Kamrut Jaman for your wonderful presentation. I think our students, particularly our main participants, can gather lots of ideas about disease modeling and how to handle the disease uh, from mathematical modeling viewpoint. And uh, thank you once again, Dr. Kamrut Jaman. Uh, we want thanks, to. Uh, Dr. Kubi, and thanks all the participants. They asked a lot of nice and pretty good questions. Also, that will help uh, in my new future research also. Okay, thank you once again. So, we want to move to the second lecture now. So, the second lecture will be delivered by Professor Dr. Hyder Ali Vishash. Professor Dr. Hyder Ali Vishash. Uh,
is currently working in the Department of Mathematics, uh, not Department of Mathematics, Mathematics Discipline of uh, Khulna University. So, Dr. Vishash uh, achieved his PhD from University of Porto, Portugal, in the field of uh, population dynamics. And Professor Vishash has a remarkable contribution in mathematical biology, particularly population dynamics, mathematical ecology, and uh, some medical problems as well. So, Professor Vishash is also the president of Bangladesh Society for Mathematical Biology. He is also involved in other societies, mathematical societies and journals as well. So, it is our great pleasure to welcome Professor Dr. Haider Ali Vishash to this uh, BSMB lecture series. Now, I would like to request Professor Dr. Haider Ali Vishash to deliver his lecture and he will talk on optimal control application uh, problems and applications <coughs> to epidemic models. So before that, just I want to take uh, some uh, time, uh, just uh, I have an announcement. So I would like to put the feedback form in the comment box. So I would like to draw the attention of all the participants. Please uh, fill out the feedback form so that we can uh, send you the e-certificate. So there is a Google form and uh, I would like to put this Google form link in the comment box so that you can find it over there. So thank you all. Now I'd like to request Professor Haider Ali Vishash to start his lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kothi. And from the very beginning, I, I would like to thank and warm welcome to all participants to our second day's webinar of International Lecture Series on Mathematical Modeling in Biology. This is the third uh, lecture to, of, of this series and I hope you have already all the participants, especially our young students, young, young uh, fellow colleagues, have already got a lot of information and sharing their knowledge while working their research in this uh, arising area of mathematics. So today now I will uh, share my research on mathematical modeling in biology, especially for the application of optimal control in biological model. And uh, very basically I will show here two examples in epidemic model, especially the communicable disease. So, from the beginning, I would uh, like to share the Is it working? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So, this is the this is the outline. From very beginning, I would discuss about some theoretical background of optimal control and what is actually the distinction between optimal control and dynamic optimization because there is some difference and actually we need to know about these two difference of optimization problem and optimal control problem and then we need to discuss some theoretical approach which is used in application in, in diversified area especially in uh, epidemic model and then I will discuss some uh, example like two applications in communicable disease. This communicable disease is mainly I chose here two problems, coronic HIV immunology model and one of, another is general sire type model with vaccination strategy. So this is the prerequisite actually because we know the participants mostly our young researchers, students, undergraduate or research students and so it is actually fundamental to know the optimal control problem before that actually we need some ideas about dynamical system, differential equations, mathematical modeling and epidemiology of emerging infectious disease and dynamical optimization like this is optimal control. 
and the overall objective is actually of this talk is to give an introduction to the participants to gain the opportunity to acquire the fundamental understanding of this type of Uh, this type of model and how is what is the distinction between optimization and optimal control problem and then it, the participants can basically understand the basic foundation to analyze the optimal control model and to find the optimal control strategy under some basic appropriate assumptions and the applications in biological and biomedical model so if someone is interested for the more study, they can study the, the, some literature and very influential books in this area. There are some other lot of books, but you can study some books, especially I, you can try my PhD thesis and it is, it is online, you can find it online, yeah, it is available in, in online, you can search this data and the other one is uh, the optimal control, the research winter, optimal control applied to biological models, Zani Lenhardt and Francis Keller. Frank, this is another very good book. And Suresh Shetty, the another application books on optimal control. So there is some very interesting literature. You can study this one. So here now I start uh, from the uh, optimization problem because optimization is a very vast area of mathematics it, there is a lot of application of optimization problem but we need to know actually the basic difference between optimization problem and optimal control problem so optimization actually what we can do that it is an act of assuming the best possible results under some given conditions that is the process of finding some conditions which gives the maximum or minimum value of the function. So this is the most general formulation of optimization problem. We should either maximize or minimize a function subject to some constraint. Actually, this constraint is either to be inequality constraint or it should be equality constraint. But there are some condition on the function as well because this x should be bounded say, and of, of course or if the function of the objective function, it should be the continuous function as well. So this is the some basic criteria of the general optimization problem in first optimal uh, dynamic optimization area. And the solution technique, how do we do usually? The set of vectors which satisfies all the conditions, that is all the constraints, is called the feasible solution. But we are interested not the feasible solution. Actually, we want to solve the problem that what we call the optimal solution. But all the feasible solution set is called the feasible region. But all, only those feasible solutions which satisfies our objective function either to be maximized or minimized, then this should be the optimal solution. So there is a lot of literature and a lot of uh, theories as well to verify this optimal solution. There is Another important theory, bias stress theorem, because we know if the set X is non-empty and compact. Compact means bounded and closed as well. And our function, objective function, if is continuous on that set, then that, that minimizing problem must have a minimizing solution. And there is another global theory for the existence of minimum solution. If X star, that is our optimal solution, is the local minimum for convex optimization problem, then that solution is actually global minimum. So there is a lot of different theories as well to solve this optimization problem. And it's another important motivational example, one can see we should minimize a function f subject to three conditions, three inequality constraint. This inequality constraint, you can see here, actually g on g2 and g3 and g on is a function actually it describes a, a 
parabola and G2 and G3 both describes a step line. And counting all these, our, there is a lot of visible solution in the shadow area, you can see. But we only have the optimal solution at the point 2, 1, because we want to minimize our control function. And only this 2, 1 function is the only solution for the, this optimization problem. So this is the basic idea of optimization problem. But now we need to know actually dynamic optimization problem. Because dynamic optimization is something a little bit different from the normal optimization, general optimization problem. Dynamic optimization problem in the global optimization is that problem which involves dynamic variables. And usually it varies under the changing the time. And this type of problem actually arises in optimal control problem. I will discuss in the next. And it is the very important formulation of the mathematically. We have also here, we should minimize a function j. We call it the objective function as like before. And here the subjective function is f. This is actually the dynamic state equation. You can see here x dot, x, u and y. All these the dynamic equation. So the before optimization problem, this type of equation was the only the algebraic equation. But here the equation looks like the dynamic equation because there is a dynamicity uh, which changes over the time. And the c is the initial condition. And a and g both are the path point constraint because there are some also dynamic uh, condition also the state variable both the condition is there so this is the point con constraint and a prime and g prime these are the algebraic constraint so these all these condition satisfied over the time this is the dynamic optimization problem so the major factor here including u if in the dynamic, dynamic optimization problem, U is involved, then this type of problem looks like the optimal control problem. But when U is absent, this is dynamic optimization problem, but not optimal control problem. So here actually, this is the basic difference. So optimal control problem, actually, in that case, we only find, try to find a control strategy U for the dynamical system over the time over the time so that the objective function is optimized that is either maximized or minimized subject to some constraint so this is the optimal control problem so optimal control problem there is a lot of application of this type of dynamical system suppose like a spacecraft is one kind of dynamical system where the rocket thruster are the control variable and our objective function may reach the moon with minimum fuel expenditure Another dynamical system may be the national economy, where objective function is to minimize our unemployment problem, and the control in that case may be our fiscal or monetary policy. So there is a lot of uh, examples of dynamical system. So the optimization, uh, the dynamic optimization and optimal control coincides only when control variable is absent and is, is including in the dynamic equation, that is in dynamic mathematical uh, dynamic optimization problem. This type of problem is called the optimal control problem. So this is the basic, very back, basic background of optimal control. Now I will show and so the some historical background. Before that, this is a, some area of application, but I will only here, I will discuss two types of model in epidemic model, especially in infectious disease or communicable disease. So the historical background of optimal control actually very old. It is more than 350 uh, years ago, but actually it is still now the new one and we give the new results uh, of, of our the environmental, of our ecological model or a different area of application. So this history actually lies on the calculus of variation because optimal control problem actually is the generalization of calculus of variation. And the most important problem there is Bradley-Stokon problem because most of the students or researchers know in the dynamical system that the Bradley-Stokon problem is very important. Is it is in the optimal control problem? This is called the time optimal control. That is this time optimal control because when it was proposed this in the same time the Bernoulli that if you allow a ball 
sliding under the gravity he reaches in the in the in, at, at minimum time then what is the locus what is the path of this of this path actually it is the cycloid you should know i think everybody knows this type of probability in practice but though it is an optimal control problem but at that time a complete solution of optimal control problem was there so there is different way of solving this type of problem but there is a milestone for solution of optimal control problem in 1958 due to contriagin and its research collaborator because contriagin discovered a set of necessary conditions for solving this optimal control problem which we call the maximum principal or minimum principal so this is the milestone in solution of optimal control problem and later on there is a lot of uh, solution there is a lot of development for contriagin uh, in maximum principal it was a uh, trans clark francis clark in 1973 the non exclusive optimal control case this is the another development another milestone in the optimization problem this non exclusive case was fully developed by uh, francis uh, clark so there is a lot of different theories developed under this type but this is the foundation of optimal control problem and the very basic background of calculus of variation looks like this you can see here it is very familiar with our optimization problem you can see here j is a function and that is the integral function and l there is three argument one is t another x and another is x dot so x dot is basically is dependent on the time derivative and here our aim is to find an arc that is the solution of this car integral function x star which minimizes or maximizes our this type of integral car so this is the calculus of variational problem so is it, it is very familiar with our optimal control problem you can see here now the connection between dynamical system and optimal control the dynamical system looks like the similar way it looks like x dot and it is a function of p and x that is x is called the state variable here and it Uh, it changes over the time that is there is a evolution of the system over the time this is the dynamical system we already discussed about this one so x is x if the system is looks like the second one that is x dot is a function of dx and u and also it has some initial condition actually this type of problem in the dynamical system in europe initial value problem and this u is actually the control variable here is the important because this type of dynamical system is controlled dynamical system and our aim is here to find such type of control which maximize or minimize the objective function and the objective function looks like in different way you can see and the before in dynamical problem or optimization problem we we found our maximum our objective function looks like a, on a algebraic function but here the objective function looks like uh, the summation of two functions so i will discuss in the next yeah, objective function this two functions but of, of course here the control function should be controlled on a strain in a set which we call the measurable set so this is the very basic uh, bolsa type standard bolsa type optimal control problem because there is a minimize we should minimize an objective function subject to some constraint like this you can see here all this constraint is like yeah, yeah, like the differential equation of linear differential equation mainly and of course there is a some constraint this constraint actually looks like or mixed estimated constraint mixed constraint we call it mixed because there is x and u both so i will discuss in the next uh, about some constraint of in optimal control problem and also u belongs to our a capital u with the measurable say and here is also the initial condition because the initial problem and our time is free so it is a free time optimal control problem and all other things are described here very clearly you can see in the literature so this is the basic foundation of optimal control and after now the objective functional here you can see the objective function have to pass and we actually want to minimize or maximize this objective function and the first part l it is called actually the terminal cost function or the salvage cost function and the second part the integral cost this is actually called the running cost so these two part 
including two parts is the standard goal set i have optimal control problem but if one part is absent somehow then the problem should be another name there are three kind of optimal control problem so here you can see the three kind of optimal control problem if the standard goal set i there is absent l that is the integral part is absent this part the mayor type optimal control problem and when this mayor type that is the a salvage cost is absent then we we only have the lagrange part and this is the lagrange type optimal control but there is a very unique connection with all three types of optimal control problem it actually depending on the problem and depending on the solution strategy we can convert on problem on kind of problem to another kind of optimal control problem so I, I am not going details in that case there are some physical constraint because some research are up we should know how important a role play the constraint in optimal control problem physical constraint you know has a great very important a uh, role in our in this type of in solution uh, in solving optimal control problem so i already discussed because this constant looks like first one this is the Uh, and this constant actually the mixed constant we call it because there is also a state and control both variable is a, a present here so this is the mixed control and the another control is the state constraint only so there only our state variable is involved there actually this state constraint is very complicated in solving theoretically because some theory has to be developed to solving this type of problem because some major is appearing radon major non non zero radon major is appearing in this type of problem but it is actually challenging but there is lot of literature we already developed and there is also some many literature existing so solving this type of optimal control problem and the set third one is actually the terminal power so there is another is condition of the constant what we call the isoperimetric constant isoperimetric constant has actually some the fixed interval and some fixed condition so i will discuss on isoperimetric constraint in one problem in sci type model i will discuss in our problem in the next time so basic idea of the solution what is the basic idea of the solution of this type of problem the basic idea i will discuss i already discussed that our target solution our target says to find some new star which minimizes our objective function or maximizes our objective function so that is we need to a set of minimizer u star and x star which we call the optimal solution over all feasible solution so the looks solution looks like in the red in the right side in the figure you can see here the maroon color is the feasible solution and only the red color this is the actually the optimal solution this is our target of the solution of optimal control problem so a milestone has happened by ponte again i already discussed ponte again discovered the set of necessary condition to solve this type of problem so this is there is not a unique uh, solution technique we need a set of condition to solving this type of problem but before that we need to define hamiltonian function with respect to our objective and subjective constraint if you see here f f is our f is our constraint and it's the dynamic constraint and l capital l this capital l is our objective function so we can define this type of hamiltonian actually this hamiltonian is called the pseudo hamiltonian and the set of necessary condition is first condition is optimality condition so when we partially differentiate a is with respect to u and at the point x u sumar a u equal u star then in that case we call the optimality condition the another condition is a state equation that is that adjoint equation this is the adjoint equation with respect to co-state variable this p p is actually co-state variable and in optimization problem actually we call this p is a lagrange multiplier so this lagrange multiplier is nothing in optimal control this is actually the co-state variable and the other the solution is the co-state equation this equation is a co-state equation this is p 
So this set of necessary condition we will get, and this fourth one is the transitivity condition. This is called actually the corner condition. So, but it is mentioned here that this corner condition actually depends on the kinds of optimal control problem. If the optimal control problem has uh, the Bolsa type problem, that is the standard Bolsa type, then this transitivity condition will be changed in a different way. So there is some other derivatives, and also. If the control is controlled by and bounded, then our necessary conditions would be changed. So this depends on the literature. So there is lot of literature. I mentioned some books. If you want to find that study, you can find this more details about the some study of this optimal control problem. So now the role of maximization or minimization of Hamiltonian. This is actually Pontryagi, Newton Pontryagi. This. This condition is called actually necessary and sufficient both condition because you already noticed in the previous condition that is it L is and L u equal zero implies that there is no constraint on the control. In that case, control is unconstrained, and in that case, sometimes the control if we need that maximal control lies the bounded, then this condition have some limitation because in that case. Our optimality condition may not sufficient condition, but Pontryagin actually replaced this condition by using Pontryagin minimum principle or maximum principle like this one. You can see here, Hamiltonian is in the optimal solution. Hamiltonian will be less than at the feasible solution. So this is actually the maximization of Hamiltonian, and It is both necessary and sufficient for the optimality condition. So this is a very strong condition for solving optimal control problem. So this theory actually I I developed in my research in PhD because for the solution of existence of the uh, optimal control we develop this theory and you can also study some books. There is a lot of theory for solving optimal control. This is the very general framework, but the solution the theory may be changed. Depending on the control with a constraint, that is with a state constraint, and sometimes with mixed constraint. So here, if we assume that is our problem P, as I mentioned before, there is a lot of functions like L, capital L, F, G, and H. Both are continuous in X, and our G, that is our G means what is our G? You can see G is the part of the control. So in that case, G should be bounded. And U is the compact set. This closed and uh, closed and bounded. This is called compact. And if U is a that our integral function L, it should be convex. If all things happen, then our objective function, that is the objective function, is finite value. And in that case, of course, we have a unit solution for this type of optimal control problem. So actually, when we go for the Numerical validation. Actually, we need to analytically verify the the theory whether our solution exists or the solution is unique. So now I am going to some application area of optimal control because optimal control has long history in modeling the nonlinear behavior of human physiological system and significantly have obtained the role of A optimal strategy for the prevention and control of human infectious disease. So this is the challenging a uh, uh, phenomena for understanding the mysterious mechanism of the host pathogen interaction inside the body. A very unique a uh, mysterious mechanism. But mathematically we can do, we can study the mechanism. We can use the model, mathematical model, and we can use the optimal control technique to understand this. Uh, uh, this transmission evolution in the disease inside the body, and uh, accordingly we can take some major or preventive strategy. Uh, accordingly, we, the uh, the pharmacist or some other policymaker can discover vaccine or some drugs on um, depending on the nature of the disease dynamics. So now, epidemic model. There are different epidemic model. You already uh, enjoyed two lectures. On the epidemic model, uh, and I am I am not going to uh, to discuss the details about on that model. I only I apply the optimal control technique in the model, 
and then this model validation with numerically and how our optimal solution looks like. So here our two problem, our two example is HIV positive patient that is immunotherapeutic treatment and another is SARE type, general SARE epidemic model with vaccination. So it is actually very important to know the immunotherapy because HIV is still now the world most leading cause of mortality and number one a mortality, the disease for the communicable disease. And it is still a dream for the whole humanity to have a vaccine because without a vaccine, we cannot consider a AIDS-free world till now. Though a lot of achievement has been achieved till now. So I will discuss immunotherapeutic treatment. Immunotherapeutic treatment of optimal, using optimal control technique and what is the immunotherapy? Actually, immunotherapy is nothing the most effective chemotherapy variety, one kind of variety of chemotherapy. But the, more, the significance of this immunotherapy is it is not only kill the pathogen in the body, but also help increasing the long-term internal resistance of our immune system so that body itself can fight against the virus. So this is most important for the uh, a HIV patient because we need actually to develop our immune system so that virus can be controlled with, with our internal immune system. And in that case, actually, remarkable milestone have been achieved by using antiretroviral therapy or highly active antiretroviral therapy. And even there are two cases of having functional cure because at least two patients, there is recorded two patients whose act here, which have been cured functionally and virus have been negative from this body using heart treatment, highly active antiretroviral therapy. And also there is some achievement also in the vaccine discovery, but we are still waiting for a vaccine fully cured our whole society, our whole community, so that we can have a world free, uh, the AIDS free world. So I will discuss here a very deterministic model but very simple model and how optimization control technique can be applied here. We only consider two state variables. The state variable T, this T is called the city cell. That is our human city cell, that is our helping T cell, we call the white blood cell. And another is our virus cell, the virus concentration. So city cell concentration and virus concentration only our two state variable acting here and all other things here review the natural death of the city cell because you know cell usually naturally de destroy but new cell again grow so this is the natural phenomena in our inside the body and lambda is the infection rate of the free virus particle and gamma also the input rate of the external virus alpha the loss of virus so this is the very parameter we are use and s1 and s2 at the source the, for the virus, S1 for the CD cell and S2 for the virus source. And this is the source for the uninfected CD cell, this S1 minus this one. And all these are the natural loss of the uninfected CD cell and this is the loss of infection. And all this accommodating, all these things, our model like looks like this one. Actually, the model has some history. This model, there is no control. This HIV type immunological model was first proposed by Kishner and Webb in 1998. And actually Kishner and Webb, they are not mathematicians, but they applied this type of mathematical model and they studied the nature of the HIV immunology very successfully. But they did not apply any control variable or control function in that case. And the initial condition here, the T1, T0 and V0. So this is the initial variable we can understand easily. But in 19, in 2002, Embraer Joshi extended this model by using optimal control. And here you can see here, this model is only the extended using optimal control and one is U1 and another is U2. This U1 actually the immunoboosting drug. Immunoboosting drug because I already mentioned that we need to develop our immune system. So there are some drugs and FDA, food and uh, 
at American Food and Food Administrative Department. They approve several drugs which have, which developed our immune system. At least now, more than 70 drugs, more than that, I, uh, drugs have been for the HIV patient uh, for the treatment of this type of drug. And you uh, too. You is, too is another uh, drugs. Also, this is this drug suppresses our uh, virus concentration. So there are two drugs: immunoboosting drugs, and another is a uh, uh, virus suppressing drugs. So the objective function is here like this. You can see here the objective function. We want to maximize our CD cell. You can see here. We put it minus because our problem is maximization. So we put minus, that is, we want to maximize our CD cell because CD cell count is very important for the HIV patient. <laughs> Goes below 200, then it is actually the severity stage for the HIV patient. And at the same time, we want to minimize our systematic cost for the immunoboosting drug and viral suppressing drug. All these two drugs. If we can, if you can see here, here the E1 and E2, this control represents immunoboosting and virus suppressing drug. But all this E1 and E2, it is a set of controls taking values actually from 1, 0 to 1 because it is important to know that why usually you take values from 0 to 1. It is actually the probabilistic sense when the control is mostly effective, we can use maximum you want, but when it is not effective, there is no drug is administered, then it is U equal to zero. So the doses actually lies between zero to one. So this is the very objective function of this type of problem. And this problem looks like our optimal control. You can see our optimal control problem looks like this one. And all the dynamics here are described here. This is very easily you can formulate this optimal control problem. And if you understand that this type of problem is our Lagrange type optimal control because our objective function is integral type and all other things are similar as I discussed before. But what we develop here? Actually, there is a excellent results using constraint. I use a state constraint on the model because it is the idea we want the virus cell should not rise up. Because when virus should rise, then our CD cell destroy. So virus should be at a minimum level. Virus, if we put the virus at a minimum level by using the uh, immunotherapy, therapeutic drug, like the immunoboosting drug, so we called it highly active antiretroviral therapy. This highly active antiretroviral therapy means the combination of at least three drugs. And if you use this combination of three drugs, it is very health hazard, so we need actually to minimize our health hazard and also to minimize our cost of control. So our idea is to put a state constraint on the virus cell and Vt of course less than equal to V bar, that is V tilde. And this V tilde actually then upper bound of the virus concentration. So we don't want our virus cell should rise more than V. And I will show in the figure that it immediately follows if we apply our treatment strategy like heart, highly active antiretroviral therapy. And our model guarantee is that the total number of virus particles remains at a certain minimum level during the whole process of the immunotherapy. And this model looks like this. Here you can see our state constraint model. This is our state constraint model. Actually, this state constraint model I mentioned before, the analytical solution have a, a little bit complicated, but it is not uh, um, it is not uh, impossible. It is also possible, and there is a lot of theory. I also developed this type of theory to solve analytically, and then we solve it numerically to show the results graphically in agreement with the analytical solution. So this is the optimal control, and here ACE is the our state constraint. I already mentioned the state constraint here. And this is the set of necessary condition, actually. If you study the book I referred, then you can find the set of necessary condition. In that case, the necessary condition, x star u star, our optimal solution, and our maximum principal 
gives the guarantee to have the set of necessary condition. The first condition, the second condition actually, this is the non-triviality condition, this is our adjoint equation, and the third one is very important, this is the maximization of Hamiltonian. In our case, this is the minimization of Hamiltonian. And all these three conditions are actually, this is due to the state constraint. This is, if the state constraint is not appeared here, this condition will not come here. But due to state constraint, it is a little bit complicated. And this Q is called actually bounded variation function. You can, if you find our, uh, my, some books I referred and my paper, then you will find the details calculation of this one. And we also define the Hamiltonian function like this. And under the Hamiltonian function, the explicit characterization of optimal control in the in the uh, in the uh, closed form. In the closed form, we, we find x1 star and x2 star in this case. It is it can be calculated analytically using the set of necessary conditions. But one important thing we should know this lambda. This lambda actually the constant, and usually the lambda equal one for the normal case because there are some abnormality if lambda is not one, and some abnormality arises for the degenerate solution. So non-degenerate solution we need lambda equal one for the normal case. So now I will show the motivation about the numerical results with our analytical findings. So in the in the left side figure, you can see the city cell count because city cell count is important. I already discussed. If city cell less than below 200, then actually the patient is very severely stressed. So the left side, I show the figure without any drug, city cell count, but without no drug. We don't use any drug. Then you can see the city cell is going down, is very quickly, and virus cell is rising up very dramatically. And so this figure suggests that we need to use our uh, drug, that is the immunotherapeutic drug, that is the virus suppressing drug and our immunoboosting drug. But when we use the drug, that is CD cell under treatment, you can see here our cell is immediately rising up, CD cell is immediately rising up and virus cell is going down, that is virus cell is minimizing. So when virus is minimizing, of course our CD cell rise up. And this is our patient we can sustain for a long time for the sustain. Though the patient cannot lie for long because still we don't have the full cure until a vaccine. So, but the patient can have sustainable life for a long time. Now I will use here the optimal control and this right side optimal control with a state constraint. You can see very interesting results here. Now we use the optimal control technique that is the immunoboosting drug and immunosuppressing drug. You can see our CT cell is rising up. It is very rising up. It is up to 1,000. And it is interesting. And our part, sometimes from the beginning, from beginning we consider two for the initial stage for the virus. And for the, after, after some days, like within 10 days, the virus goes very down. But sometimes it is going up and it continues up to bar. This is actually because of the uh, resistance of the drugs of the human body. And that's why we need actually the multi-drug combination, what we call the heart treatment, highly active antiretroviral therapy. So our intention is here, put on the uh, virus concentration at a minimum level. So you can see here, when we put the state constant, then the virus immediately follow, and they cannot exceed you can see they cannot exceed 2.5. Here 2.5, the upper limit, upper bound on the virus cell. So virus should be minimized by using our highly active antiretroviral therapy. That is by using the immunoboosting drug. So virus cannot rise. So if the virus cell cannot go up, in that case our CT cell will go rise. And more interesting is that we get found here. You can see CT cell also as well is going up. And we consider the initial condition only two. And of course, the virus concentration should be maintained, should be halted at the same point. That, that is, the virus cannot go up from the initial stage. It depends on actually the scheduling for our drugs combination. And it, it, it has happened that our doctors 
who cares the patient can easily take this type of measure this is a very good results tremendous results in using optimal control uh, technique and our at the combination of the multi drugs treatment for immuno boosting or immuno suppressing drugs so this is the case for hiv immunology model i will now discuss an application for the epidemic model he already know some epidemic model discussion dr kam rujjaman and some yesterday some other lecture there are some model already discussed so i am not going details about this type of model just i apply some model with vaccination policy so there are two types of model in epidemic and endemic si type is the very a very initial stage model si model mainly si and then si r but if it is epidemic we don't consider here any demography that is no birth rate and death rate is considered here but when it is endemic then in that case birth rate and death rate is considered so the epidemic and endemic model this is the basic structure of this type of model and this is the more generalization of sir model it is one component is including here exposed exposed actually have some latent period for the virus to show the syndrome when virus inside the body we take some time or some days to show the syndrome and to become infectious of this patient and then it is infected and it it, be, it become recovered so this type of case of, of course here we need to address exposed class so this is the basic sci type epidemic model and how i will i will use this sci type model in a vaccination program this model actually very common model it is a general form of sir model with vaccination and i already uh, i have this model developed in my phd or and you can find this paper in it it is mostly cited paper and in the website you can find and this model actually first developed by susan elenhart i already mentioned the name and also mentioned one book uh, optimal control applied to biological model susan elenhart developed this model using vaccination policy you can see here susceptible exposed infectious and recovered but if you vaccinate some susceptible population it immediately goes to the recovered class so vaccination is very effective way now we still are waiting for covid a pandemic situation we are the whole world is waiting for a vaccine so when vaccine is the most effective way to control or to, to treat the disease so this is the most a common general type model you can apply this model in any type of disease of the infectious uh, category and this model actually i already discussed was developed by susan elenhart and susan elenhart takes optimal control technique as a vaccination for the long over the time fixed time interval this fixed time she considered this t is actually 20 years that is there is a lot of program in our country also you can see the missless program and there are some other vaccination program government have this type of program so this type this is some kind of this type of problem vaccination strategy for the fixed time interval but one the remarkable feature of that problem was she considered the supply of vaccine is limited this is actually unrealistic because sometimes supply of vaccine is is huge we have a lot of vaccine unlimited vaccine but we should have some limitation because there are some skilled uh, nurse skilled doctor they cannot put the vaccine clearly there is some limitation for the communication because some people cannot go for the remote area so there are different uh, lacks of uh, limitation but if we need we want to vaccinate all the whole people uh, we need to vaccine all the population in a certain region so supply of vaccine actually she used one kind of constraint this constraint is called the isoperimetric constraint it looks like this because you can see here as is our susceptible population and use the rate of vaccinate so rate of vaccinate over the time it is the vaccinated population so vaccinated population should be fixed so this is actually unrealistic because you cannot vaccinate all the people you should vaccinate a limited number of people so we actually generalize this model using a state constraint and mixed constraint so there was a very good results in our study and it was also published in that time 
is very good journal and it is very highly cited paper. <coughs> so you can see here that we handle this type of uh, isoperimetric constant is very easy. She considered extra state variable W. And if you consider extra additional state variable, it immediately this state variable goes to our dynamics, our objective function. So there is nothing more uh, uh, new here. And here you only uh, important thing is see, you can see here at the uh, terminal type T, capital type T is the terminal type that is here vaccination program like 20 years. Our terminal time is WM. This WM is equal, she considered. But actually, it means all vaccines should be used. Actually, this is, in our sense, it looks more realistic if we use the terminal time, the vaccine is less than equal one. So this should use more realistic using this one. And all this, combining all these things, the model looks like this is the optimal control problem which Susan Elenhard used in her model. The mini, here is objective function, you can see, objective function minimize the infected population, infected people by vaccination. And also minimize the systematic cause of the vaccination. Subject to the constant of some dynamics. You can see susceptible S, E, I, and N here. Here actually recovered is not considered because all the recovered population goes immune. So we, can, we don't consider here the immunity because when susceptible people is vaccinated, it goes to immunity. So when it is immunity, it never it is considered that he never gets infected again. So this is the total number of population. And you can see here W dot. This is actually our isoperimetric constant. So this is immediately isoperimetric constant. This is immediately another state state variable that is another differential equation. So nothing is new here. So, but in our model, we develop this isoperimetric constraint by using mixed constraint because because we need we know sometimes vaccine may be limited, sometimes our skill population may be limited, sometimes our supply, the remote area supply can be limited. So there is may limited for another region, but not our vaccine. Vaccine may, may be available, but our population, skill population may be limited. In that case, we use this case, mixed constant case. And so, if we use this mixed constant, we don't need to use additional state variable in that case. And our model looks like this type. You can see, find here, mixed constant optimal control problem. As usual, I already all mentioned all this equation in our previous uh, slide. And all the remarkable thing is that, it is remarkable that susceptible people, when we guess all the new birth, it immediately comes in the susceptible because by birth, all people are susceptible. But after vaccination, a susceptible individual becomes immune. So if we want to minimize, if we want to minimize this susceptible population, so we want to have a limit. We have to put a restriction on the susceptible population. This is called another state constraint on the susceptible population. So if we want to put a state constant on the susceptible population, the susceptible population always a follow a, a certain number, and it actually then our vaccinated population goes rise. So I, this is our main idea to to rise or to maximize our vaccinated population. So this case, our state variable control problem looks like this is the state variable state constant optimal control problem. So. Now this is the formulation and as usual, in, I discussed before, the maximum principle looks like this. If you want to see the details, analysis and calculation, you can find my paper in this uh, in this paper and there is a good calculation of this. Characterization optimal control you can find in the compact form in this way. So all this analytical solution gives the numerical validation of course. You can see now the computational results gives this is the Susan e. Leonard model. When Susan e. Leonard used the, uh, the restriction, that is isoperimetric constraint in the, uh, in the last of the program, in the end of the program, that is 20 years, then only 2,500 uh, people should be vaccinated. It is actually very low. 
But in that case, susceptible people is rising up, very susceptible because all the susceptible are going up. So we should minimize also susceptible and how we should maximize our vaccinated population. And here in the control case, you can see the control is not active after five or seven years. After seven years, the control is not active. The control is going down. So control has no uh, activation in this program. But in our case, when we use our mixed constant case, you can see our susceptible population is rising, but our vaccinated population is also rising. You can see the vaccinated population is rising, and even our optimal control is working the whole period of time. It is the singular type optimal control problem because it, it starts from a from initial stage and the whole period of the 20 years it is rising up. But at the end of the program, it is going inactive. More good results we are seeing is in our state constant case. You can see if we put state constant on the susceptible population, you can see if we put on the state bound on the susceptible population and 1100. Then it immediately our vaccinated population rise up. You can see here more than 7,000 is already vaccinated population is rising. Our infected also infected is going down. You can see the infected is after 10 years is infected rising down. Even our optimal control strategy is from the beginning it is more effective one, and then at the last of that it is always effective at a singular case. It never goes in the zero inactive case. So this is actually. Very good results, good findings using optimal control with a state constraint and mixed constraint. And this is the most generalization case for SCI type of model with vaccination strategy. And here our infection case, you can see infection is going down. Infection rate of infection is going down in the blue case when we use our state constraint, this type of case, and all others that is without case, that is the, the Susan Leonard. It is actually the, uh, is the green one, and our blue one is more effective for the infected population. So this is the case I used the optimal control technique in a ACI type general model. Thank you so much, and thank you.